Effective screen time. So I had high hopes for this study because we don't really know a lot about early screen time for patients. We don't really know, you know, if screens are harmful. We've been kind of led to believe that people after concussion should avoid screens. We don't really have any data on this. We don't know that if it's actually harmful or not. And but yet we're telling people to avoid screens. You know, theoretically, screens could be stimulating. And if we want the brain to have low stimulation, then we should probably tell people to avoid screens. But we've never really studied it. So I had some high hopes for this study. Uh, but unfortunately, it wasn't that great. It just wasn't done in a way that I think would be the best way to do it. So 125 participants presenting to the University of Massachusetts with an acute concussion less than 24 hours after injury. Participants were randomized into two groups. So they had a screen time permitted group saying you guys are allowed to engage in whatever you want to do for the first 48 hours. And then they had a, a screen time abstinent group, which was told to abstain from engaging in any form of screen time for 48 hours. And all participants were avoid, uh, advised to avoid work and school for 48 hours. Participants completed the symptom severity scale um, at the clinic at enrollment, and then they did it every day for 10 days during the study duration. For three days following hospital discharge, participants completed a daily screen time survey. On days four to 10, participants completed an activity survey. They should have done screen tracking, I think, to actually look at screen time usage because now you can do that, but it wouldn't take into account TVs or things like that. But obviously self-report, you're going to get a bias, especially if you've told these this group here to avoid all screens, they may not tell you that they've actually been on their screens, right? They may be wanting to be a little bit compliant and they may want to say, you know, no, I was, I was good, even though they weren't. So we have to take that into account that there could be some limitation there. Primary outcome was days to concussion recovery, which was defined as having less than three points on the symptoms severity scale. They also looked at different ways of measuring recovery. So they use three additional thresholds because previous literature, some studies have shown that recovery is defined at less than seven points on the symptoms very scale. Other studies have shown that less than six points is recovery on the symptoms very scale. And others have said you have to be less than one point on the symptoms very scale. So they just, they tried to see, do this, does this make a difference in how we, you know, mark recovery. They looked at the amount of sleep and screen time, and they looked at the days of return, the days it took to return to school and work and the days it took to return to exercise. And there we go. So they had daily reminders to complete the measures. Mean age of 17 years, half were male, half were female. Uh, enrollment was between uh, 2018, March, 2020. The median PCS score at enrollment for the screen time of stain group was 24 and the screen time permitted group was 21. So those are different, but they didn't say if they were statistically different or not. So we don't know because these two groups may have been different right from the get go. So there may have been an issue right there, but they didn't mention if it was significant or not. Cox regression model demonstrated that female participants, regardless of what group they're in, and those in the screen time permitted group were less likely to recover in uh, over the 10-day study duration than males and those in the screen time abstained group. Screen time permitted group had a median time to recovery of eight days compared with only 3.5 days in the screen time abstained group. Remember, this is just trying to get to symptom severity score of less than three. Now, interestingly, as soon as they got to a screen, as soon as they submitted a score that was less than three, they called them recovered. But 12 participants in each of the groups reported that they had a score of less than three, and then the very next day reported more than three. So are they actually recovered or they just have a good day? Okay, so they're marking that day as the cutoff point, yet they kept tracking their symptoms and 12 patients in each group actually ended up having an increase of symptoms again. So we don't actually know if these people were recovered. So we're using this markation of recovery based on self-reported symptoms, but yet the symptoms were fluctuating. So are they actually recovered? We don't know. So the whole study starts to fall apart. Uh, 80 participants completed all three days of screen time survey. Screen time permitted group had a median of 630 minutes of screen time use compared with only 130 minutes in the screen time abstain group. So the screen time abstain group was still on their screens. And we don't even know if this number is accurate because they may have been not reporting uh, the full, um, full extent of their screen use, but we don't know. Um, 
using any of the alternative ways of defining recovery didn't really make a difference. They still, you know, um, had the same thing. 73 participants reported sleep duration was not different between the groups in any way. Median time to return to work or school was seven days in the screen time permitted group versus six days in the screen time abstain. Does that matter one day earlier? Maybe, maybe not. Median time to return to exercise was eight days in the screen time permitted group and seven days in the screen time abstain group. Again, is this, you know, does this mean anything? We don't know. So anyway, conclusion, there's been limited data to guide screen time following concussion. This study found that avoiding screen time during the acute concussion recovery may shorten the duration of symptoms. So obviously this study has a lot of problems, but it's an interesting one that gives us some insight into screen time use. And potentially we should be telling patients to avoid screens in the first you know, 48 hours after their injury. Um, you know, I think we need better quality studies to you know, make a better recommendation on this. But for now, it doesn't hurt. Tell them to avoid the screens, I guess, for the first couple of days, um, you know, or just at least even cut back. Yeah.